Hey Keith here from I Rich and today we're going to talk about a stock that I think is very interesting. It could have some potential. And this stock I kind of alluded to or talked a little bit about in a previous video. Maybe I'll put a link somewhere, but that was the video that I talked about, well started out talking about bananas, but it went to the shipping container industry. And just to recap, the shipping container industry is under a lot of pressure right now because um, every time they, it's a cyclical kind of industry, and every time they have an increased expectation in trade or global trade, uh, all the companies try and build a whole bunch of new boats to kind of capture that market and compete with others. You know, building the bigger ships so it's a little bit more efficient. And the problem with that is they're not coordinated, and so they all build more ships than are needed. And so even if you meet that kind of expected growth in trade, or even a little, a little bit less, then the problem is you have an oversupply of ships. And so ships are not full when they're expected to be, and so they don't make as much money, or they have to cut prices to fill those ships. And so they just earn less money. And so what's happened is um, you have a whole bunch of investment in new ships, so, so and that costs a lot of money, and then they're earning less money than expected. So right now, the container shipping industry, a lot of the companies are losing money, or their stock price, if you look at them, they're going towards zero. Not a good situation for a lot of them. But there's a few out there, I mean the industry itself's not going away, so there's a few out there that might uh, be of interest. And one of them I mentioned was uh, the Danish company AP Moller Maersk, or Maersk for short. And this is the company I'm going to talk about now. For those of you who don't know, yes it's a shipping container company, um, but they also have been in the past involved in many things, and I think uh, like grocery stores, um, more late, they've been doing like offshore drilling, um, and they try to divest those things, especially now that they've had rough times as of late. They're trying to uh, basically manage their finances so that they don't have a downgrade in their credit rating. And so they've got rid of, I think they sold off their uh, offshore, most of their offshore business to Total. And they're trying to uh, implement things to maintain their credit rating. And, and so far it seems to be working and there might be reason, extra reasons why people would do that even if their finances aren't the best. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the story what they're at now. There's other side stories like uh, they're trying to do a kind of a crypto shipping document uh, using blockchain for shipping because they had a huge security breach a few years ago. And um, that's one thing. And they're also trying to implement uh, a carbon neutral strategy for the future. I think they were aiming for 2050 or something, but um, that's a ways off. But they're, they're heading down that kind of you know, greener path, I guess you would call it. Now, we're going to talk about the American depository receipt for this company. So the ticker symbol is AMKBY. And its stock price is at seven dollars and eight cents, which gives it a PE ratio of seven or nine point three, which is pretty cheap. It sounds like, but the forward PE ratio is expected to be thirty three point seven, which is quite a bit higher, suggesting quite a bit slower growth in the next year or so. And I'll get to that in a bit. Its price to book ratio is 0 0.9, pretty cheap for any company. That said, this industry itself is uh, generally valued lower because of uh, how cutthroat it is and how cyclical it is. Its dividend is at 1.6%, so nothing exciting, I guess. And its five-year growth rate for its intrinsic value has been a minus 3.6% uh, per year, so not very good. And this really speaks to the shipping industry having oversupply. I mean, it's been basically doing worse every year for the last five years, on average. So. Uh, not a good situation. This company is also, you know, it has lost money in the past. They're not losing money at the moment, but they, they could. So th there's kind of uh, that situation, but they are the biggest player around. And so why do I like this? Well, yeah, like I mentioned, the biggest player in an industry that's undervalued. So it might have the chance if you bought it, you know, like I can see this, um, typically these stocks, they get close to double or more. Um, because Maersk is the biggest, they might only go up like 80%, but it's been very co like repetitive every time they have these cycles. So it's uh, something to keep in mind, and that's kind of one reason I think this is an interesting stock. Now, it is cheap right now, but I don't know that it's the cheapest, and that goes back to its forward P. And so this is why, although I find it very interesting, it might not be um, the time to buy yet. So its forward P ratio, 
is very low because they're expected to have a lot more expenses in the future. And this is all because, uh, well, I don't know if it's all because, it's partly because of a UN um, resolution or recommendation. But basically, the UN wants shipping containers to be more pollution less pollution friendly, I don't know, something like that. So they want to be greener and they want them to do a couple of things. Either they want to add scrubbers to them, which costs a lot of money, or they want to change the fuel they're using because the fuel they're using currently is very polluting. Um, it's one of the biggest emissions of sulfur into the air. And uh, I read an article where one container ship, it's you know, CO2 emissions can be equivalent to about a million cars. So these are huge polluters when they come into port cities. They can add smog just because they're coming into the city. And that's not good. I mean, if you put all the shipping container ships together, they, I think they're like 3% of the world's uh, CO2 emissions. And if you went by country, I think they're something like sixth. Uh, would rank sixth in the world out of countries for biggest polluters. <laughs> so not very good. And so this UN resolution or recommendation is trying to force them uh, on January 2020 to basically switch over to uh, a better way, like uh, having scrubbers or uh, using a new fuel. And what I could see is a lot of ports, they might force um, this at first to basically have ships that can only accept a certain fuel to come into port. And because of this, uh, so far the market hasn't really, the, the industry hasn't really reacted that fast to it because um, they don't want the extra expense because it's such a cutthroat business and they're losing money already. But when it does come into play, um, certain shipping lanes will be kind of restricted if it's enforced for only the companies who are in, able to comply with this. And Maersk might be one of those companies that are headed that way. So they're going to have significant reduction in their earnings but uh, that said it's going to um, maybe put them in a position of strength later on so i can see this stock price probably dropping and then later on going up so that's why i'm kind of thinking it might not be the right price uh, right now to buy but it is an interesting stock <laughs> now the and, and this un resolution also has a lot of other you know, side issues to it, and maybe I'll get into that in future videos. But um, yeah, the, the positive side I see for Maersk is it's the global leader. Um, it's probably going to stay there, and it's probably going to have an even bigger moat when it can actually switch over, and other companies might not be able to afford to switch over to these cleaner, uh, either scrubbers or fuel. And so it might just be able to maintain a lot of shipping lanes that it's not expected to. Um, you know, it'll have less competition basically. And the other thing they're trying to do is implement more of a ground-based approach. So they'll grow by having more ground transport. And if they can control those lanes, they'll be able to have more seamless shipping routes throughout the world. So that's something they're doing. I think these are positives. It's at a low price, it could get lower. And that's a good time probably to look into buying it for me, because I think it might go up. But the bad side, I guess their credit rating could go worse and, you know, who is going to back them up? I kind of think because they're the biggest, people will probably finance them, be a little bit more willing to finance them uh, at a lower rate. Um, now, other that said, other countries also have, you know, China backs up Evergreen and maybe Costco, so they, they might also be able to help float those kind of boat companies. So it's, it really depends. It, it is one of their biggest risks is the credit, though. Um, so I see that could happen. They might have to lose their number one position and that could cause many more problems in the future. It could be a slow demise, basically. So I think minimal downside, there is downside, but minimal downside, it's almost a low price. It might go a little bit lower and then look at it, maybe time to buy. I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you guys think that could be the case or not? Uh, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, yeah, that's kind of where we're gonna end it. I do these videos because I want to improve my public speaking um, and I like to talk about stocks. Uh, feel free to subscribe, but otherwise, <laughs> um, let me know what you think.